uh, welcome guys. So uh, yeah, basically this video just from my own uh, record for the group theory. So uh, yeah, I want to make a lecture of a group theory and the uh, con uh, because group theory is a very large subject, right? So I hope to uh, uh, make a video and uh, basically contain the step by step of the group uh, the topic in the group theory. Uh, so I want one. Uh, I want to. I intended to do is that we start from group theory, and then in the next uh, uh, next video list, we talk about a commutative algebra. So, right, So basically, it contains like the uh, the common ring theory, and then we go to field theory. So like uh, talking about rational field, uh, uh, real field, complex field, and the finite field, and we go to about the Galois. So basically, the standard the standard algebra course in the uh, uh, math undergrads, and I think the I so I think the Hurston is a good book. Yeah, but uh, I mean, this kind of uh, notes can follow. Uh, you can check any uh, any place. Okay, so uh, this video, let's just talk about definition. So the definition of the group. Yeah, so basically you have a non-empty subset, oh, sorry, non-empty set, and uh, A is a called group. If we satisfy the uh, four property, the first is that if A, B belongs to A, and uh, their products belongs to A, so this is closed. Oh, by the way, if you only have this property, then this is called a semi-group. Okay, and the second is that, uh, uh, wait a second, right? So second means that uh, uh, there is associativity. Okay, and the third is that uh, if you, uh, for any element, right, there is a special element. Uh, so there is a special element which do not depend on other elements such for E to belongs to A, such that uh, EA equals to A equals e A. So this is the identity. Okay, and uh, if you have a, uh, for all, all belongs to for any atom belongs to a there is this a inverse belongs to a such that a a inverse is identity equals a inverse a okay so if, if you have for these four elements that are called a group it's a called a group okay uh yeah so one uh, very common example is that uh, given non empty sets s then you can define a s basically it's all the continuous function not continuous, all the uh, function from S to S. And uh, such that uh, is a uh, one, one and uh, on two. So injective and both surjective. And A is a uh, functional groups from the group. No proof is uh, trivial. Okay, so check out by yourself, right? Because uh, obvious close and the uh, functional always satisfy the property. And uh, for each element, right, you can, for each element in A, then it's easy to get the identity, right? Because this identity for its group, just the identity function and the inverse exists. Oh, because it's homomorphic, uh, it's, uh, it's a one, one and uh, on two, right? So the inverse exists. Okay, so still the definition. If A, B belongs to equals to B, A for all A, B in the group G, so we use G and G is called Abelian. Also Abelian group uh, classification of finite Abelian group is the, the main uh, successful results in a uh, uh, group zero. Uh, we will talk in the future. Okay, so let's talk about some uh, examples. So there are so many examples, right? But uh, we talk about some of them. A uh, group zero, I think is very easy, right? So should be everyone should feel right. I mean it's so easy. <laughs> okay. Uh, so first example uh, is the integer, right? So integer in a group, uh, in a uh, addition. Sorry. So obvious satisfied everything. So also Q in addition, real number in addition, a complex number in addition. So these are infinite group. Okay. And also uh, the simple group is the C two. Right. You have a Minus one and one, and in the in the product is the group, uh, group, group, uh, uh group operation. Okay, and uh, also uh, you have G equals S N. So basically, basically S N just the A. 
So con contains all the one to one map, uh, one to one map surjective fun function from uh, one into one. So basically, it's just permutate permutation, uh, permutation, tension, tension of n letters. Or basically, n symbols is also okay. yeah, just some terminology. And also, uh, g equals to s one is u one, right? So you can take the circle and the products, right? So this is a abelian group. Okay, so up to now, uh, four of them are abelian group. So let's talking about oh, not not okay. So not really, right? So this is not the uh, this is not abelian group. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I think that's enough. Okay, so okay, so let's talk about a cyclic group. So cyclic group is also interesting. So uh, if you, so what's the cyclic group, right? So uh, let's say, so G construct all symbols, let's say AI, right? So I from uh, zero to N. So if I zero, you just put identity, right? Uh, right such that uh, AI, AJ defined to be AI plus J and the a n to be one, right? So n is the, yeah, n, n is the smallest number such that a n to be one. So this is called a cyclic group. So we use uh, z n as a definition, right? So for example, d3 is basically a zero, a one, a two, such as satisfied a three is one. I satisfy this property. Okay, so uh, yeah, the representation for this or the common uh, realization of these d3 is basically exponential to pi i divided by three identity and exponential four pi i divided by three. So easy to check that in the multiplication they form a group. Also group. Okay, uh, let's see. I know you can generalize into zn, right? So general zn representation just basically uh, exponential to pi i uh, k divided by n, which k from zero, one, two, and minus one. Okay, uh, yeah, up to now is everything still trivial, right? So let's talk about our examples. Yeah, so this video just very easy, just make a definition of the group. Okay, so G is a set. Basically you can uh, construct all the matrix, right? Basically their determinant is non zero, two by two. Okay, so simple to prove that this is the group. The reason is that, so the, main, so the identity just the uh, identity matrix and the inverse just exists, right? Because it's non-zero and the matrix are already associative. So, and also close two by two matrix, close. Right, so that means, uh, so that means uh, this group are usually called the uh, general linear group two. Uh, if your coefficient are in any field, so any field F, so usually called GL2F. Okay, and also a special subgroup, basically, uh, there is a special subgroup called SL2F, which means that also NF means that you have a, a N by N, N by N uh, matrix with the coefficient in F, such that the determinant of, uh, let's say this is A, determinant A is one. Okay, so we have the more general group, like general linear group F and the special linear group. And then you can start here to define a standard orthogonal group, a sympathetic group. Okay, and then there's a whole subject study that is kind of a group, basically it's continuous group called a Lie group. Okay, so Lie group is not the easy subject, which is very difficult compared to the, yeah, finite group zero. Finite group zero is also difficult. Okay, and also I want to mention that uh, all the, all the, uh, all the, Anti uh, all the uh, all the uh, anti symmetric group is also a functional group. Okay. Uh, okay. So let up to now we already have everything. So let's talking about some trivial results. So let's say lemma. So uh, this lemma is simple, right? So basically, if you choose a group, so let's prove uh, the first one is identity is unique. Okay. So basically there's only one identity. And the second is that uh, A has a unique inverse. So remember that uh, when I say the definition, I say that uh, there's a thing called identity and A equals to EA equals to A. Right? So I didn't say that E is unique. Also I say that for every A belongs to the group, there exists the B, right? Such that uh, AB equals BA equals A. So I didn't say B is unique. 
Right, but this lemma will tell you that one in, uh, is unique and A is a unique inverse. Okay, and then inverse inverse is A, and uh, for tell you that A B inverse, B inverse A inverse. Okay, so simple proof. So the proof one is a trivial. Uh, the reason is that uh, suppose you have E1 and E2, right? So by definition, E1, E2 must be E1, and also must be E2. So they are unique. If you have two identity, right, then by this definition. Okay, so uh, how about A inverse? So let's say A has two inverse. Let's say B1 and B2, right? So you have AB1 equals BA1 equals uh, E, and then AB2 equals BA2 equals E, right? So uh, from here, if you times uh, B2, you get B2AB1 equals to B2, right? But B2, but why is the B2A? Right, B two A is identity, right? By this, so E B one equals to B two, so B one must equals to B two. Okay, so unique. Okay, how about the third? A inverse inverse is A, right? Just trivial. So check it by yourself. Okay, so number four also trivial, right? A B inverse is a B inverse A inverse. The reason is that A B times B inverse A inverse will be identity, right? Because uh, these two cancel. Okay. Why? I mean, I, I mean, everyone still is easy. Okay. And I think up to now, uh, it's enough. So let's, okay, so final remark. So the final remark. So next time we talk about subgroup call sets and uh, other things. Final remark say that if AX equals to B and uh, YA equals to B has a unique solution in G. Oh, so, and the proof is trivial because uh, if AX equals to B, then S just A equal, equals A inverse B because each element in the group can be inverse and Y equals to B A inverse. Okay, so uh, see you guys in the uh, next videos. Hope you guys uh, subscribe to my channel.